This is an interesting story about the first time I failed my CDL driver's license test. Now, to be honest, I don't think this test was fairly graded because, you know, a lot of circumstances happened that resulted in me failing this test that, uh, basically, I, I, I feel like those should have been considered. Now, first of all, I had to make, uh, there, there are a few things you had to do on a CDL test. A lot more than you have to do when getting a license for your car, <laughs> at least in the state of Pennsylvania anyway. They're actually very, they're not very strict at all about how to get a car driver's license. Just a license for driving a truck. Anyway, in Pennsylvania, you have to be able to back up in a straight line with a truck, with a trailer attached to you. You have to be able to make a parallel park either on the left side or right side of the vehicle. Usually it's the right side. Even though, generally, they tell you not to parallel park in that direction because the trailer blocks your uh, your vision. <laughs> Another thing you have to do is you have to drive on at least one highway. You have to be able to pull over on the side of the road. You have to be able to pull back into traffic without causing an accident, obviously. This means you have to use at least one on-ramp and at least one off-ramp. You have to cross at least one railroad crossing and there are a few other things you have to do too like you have to be able to drive downhill without getting stuck in neutral you also have to have good basic handling of the vehicle in other words you can't scrape the gears when trying to shift gears because obviously that shows that you don't know how to drive the vehicle so the first test I was taking I had to parallel park only one slight problem. The pavement of the of the entire parking lot was wet because it, it had recently rained. Now, normally, rain isn't that much of an issue. I mean, I've driven trucks in the rain before. The problem is, the pavement was really faded, and I could barely see it, and the, and the road being reflective because it was wet made it worse. So I couldn't even see the area I was trying to parallel park into. All I could see was my truck's reflection. And that was really irritating and frustrating. And it resulted in me failing because I couldn't park it in the area. Because, like I said, I couldn't see it. So needless to say, I failed the parallel park part of the test. Usually if you fail that, you can't even take the road test. But this, this driver, he'll let, he'll let you eat and take the test anyway. And if you pass that part... It, it, you'll mark, it, he'll mark that part of the test as being passed, but you'll still have to take the basic skills test again, which is the one where you test your, your ability to parallel park and stuff. So anyway, I'm going out on the road and I'm thinking, well, I may have failed that test, but at least I can pass this one and get this one over with. But there were a few issues that happened after that. So the next part of the test, I had to make a right turn at this intersection and cross this railroad crossing. There's actually a funny... Now, there's actually a funny story about this one specific railroad crossing. The, the person giving me the test told me that one time there was a train crossing this railroad crossing. Then he stopped and then walked across the street to to, to buy a sub from Subway. <laughs> Everyone was really mad at him at that po at at that point. They were like, "Come on, we're trying to cross the cross the crossing, and, and you stopped the train to order a sandwich." <laughs> It's funny because I've never heard of a train driver actually stopping <laughs> just to buy a sandwich. So yeah, that was pretty funny. So anyway, normally this intersection wouldn't be an issue. I've I've crossed lots of railroad crossings before. There are lots of them in Allentown, Pennsylvania, which is a town very close to where I live. A lot of them are actually very weird. They cross the intersection at an angle like this, <laughs> causing you to have to stop behind the tracks before making the turn. So yeah, I'm very used to railroad crossings. But there were a few rules that the person testing me had about this intersection. A lot of people, when making a right turn on an intersection like this, they tend to turn onto the left lane and then stay in the left lane. He bit, uh, uh, one student told me he did that and he got failed instantly for that. So I was trying very carefully to be as far to the right as possible when making this turn. But the trailer hit the curve. And then I failed, but he still let me take the rest of the test, even though, even if I got everything else right, I would have still failed because of that one part. 
Hitting the curve automatically fails the test. If you hit the curve once, you automatically fail. So I cross the railroad crossing properly after that, and and, I'm, and then later I enter an on ramp and get on the highway. Then I get off the on uh, I get off the highway on an off ramp, and that's when another issue happens. Though it's very unusual where I live, the speed limit for this ramp was 55 miles per hour. Now, in school they tell you, as a rule of thumb, to avoid rolling over on the sharp curves that highway ramps have, always drive 10 miles per hour under the speed limit. So I'm traveling down this ramp at 45 miles per hour. Which, as for the training I had received, was the correct thing to do in this situation. So, this is a very... This is a very wide ramp. It curves very sharply to the left. I mean, not sharply. It curves very widely to the left. And, and I don't know where I'm going, obviously, because I've never been on this road before. I'm just being tested. I have, I have no idea where this ramp leads. All I know is that the speed limit is 55, so I'm traveling 45. And because the curve is so wide, I, my first assumption is that it's one of those ramps that, go, that turns off of one highway and curves onto another. In other words, I didn't really have to worry about slowing down too much before getting before you know getting to the end of this ramp. But little did I know, at the end of this ramp was a very sharp curve, and at the end of that sharp curve was an intersection where you could only turn right. I'm not sure what this, what this was all, what this was for, but you know highway ramps are actually very confusing in that one town I was driving in. They're, they don't follow the specific patterns they do where I live. So I was not expecting the ramp to suddenly curve to the left or the right, and I was not expecting it to end at an intersection, especially if the speed limit was 55 miles per hour. Usually if the speed limit is that high, it ends on a highway ramp. It doesn't end at a regular street at the end of the, um, at the, end of the ramp. So... So, I, I'm about to approach the curve, and I'm like, what in the world is this? I, I'm shocked, because usually in the state of Pennsylvania, if there's a curve showing up, where there's a, if there's a curve coming up where you would have to slow down to a lower speed than the speed you're already going, there would be a diamond-shaped yellow sign with an arrow turning to the direction of the curve, and a speed limit telling you, how fast you should go around this curve, or how fast they recommend you go around it. But there was no such sign. The last sign I had received was an exit ramp sign telling me that the speed limit was 55 miles per hour. I had not received a sign warning me of a sharp curve coming up that would require me to slow down any, even more than that. So, I see this curve and I'm slowing down as quickly, I'm slowing down obviously because I'm like, okay, this curve is a lot sharper and like 55, 55 or even 45 seems too fast for this. So I slow down to 25 and, and, the, and, my, and the person testing me is like, What are you doing? Slow down, slow down, slow down! <laughs> so I down, slow down even further to like 15 and then 10. And then I fail automatically because when, you, um, when, the, te when the person testing you has to tell you to slow down or stop to avoid an accident, you automatically fail. Because that means that Someone had to intervene to uh, to prevent you from crashing, which basically means had you have been out on your own in that situation, you would have crashed. Now, there probably would have been a sign warning me about this sharp curve, but it was probably run over. That happens a lot where I live. And trucks have a tendency of running over street signs. So there probably was a very important street sign telling me, hey, there's a curve about the show up you need to slow down but someone probably ran over it okay now at this in this situation I had to make a left turn a sharp left turn onto another two-lane street at an intersection so I start to make the turn there are people uh, that's hilarious anyway there are people at a stop sign on the at this intersection now now, my teachers had told me that when you're making a left turn at an intersection like this, to make the turn, at, at, if there are cars, you know, stopping at a stop sign and they're in your way, basically just make the turn and keep going until the trailer is very close to the front of the car. This will scare the driver and, for, and cause them to back up because obviously they're like, they're like, oh no, there's a truck in front of me. I don't want to get hit, so I'm going to back up. 
it's funny I have actually scared a lot of drivers with this method they basically what happens is they're like oh no he's gonna hit me so I back up I don't, I'm not sure why they I'm not sure why but their first assumption is always that the driver is going to hit them as if they as if as if truck drivers are known for hitting people on purpose but bas but basically my teachers told me to take advantage of the fact that they're afraid of me and think that I'm going to hit them and basically intimidate them and make them get out of the way so that there's enough room that I can make this turn without hitting them <laughs> and I've, I actually have done this a lot when I was you know being taught how to drive and in every in every situation it has worked but unfortunately the person who was testing me did not like this method too well. In fact, he was very much against it. Now, the person testing me sees me making the left turn, and he's like, what do you think you're doing? Don't, don't you see those cars there? You're about to hit them. And I'm like, and I'm thinking, I'm not going to hit them, obviously. I, I'm not trying to go to jail or get a ticket. No, I'm just trying to make them back up so I can finish this turn. As I was trained to do, by the way. <laughs> like, they to like, they told me, hey, look, if you wait for a car, if you try to wait for a car, you're basically going to you're basically going to be there all day. So what what you should do is just make the turn, intimidate them and cause them to back up so that they get out of your way and then finish the turn and you know, you'll be able to make the turn a lot faster that way. But unfortunately, my trainer did not agree with this method when he saw me doing this. He he, he referred to it as not paying attention to my surroundings and making a <laughs> making a turn without checking to make sure it was safe and that was another reason why he failed me so i drive i i drive back to the warehouse where uh, where i had begun taking the test very annoyed very embarrassed and very frustrated and the driver and then and then the person testing me mentions another reason why he failed me and i'm like what did i do this time he he fails me because the speed at which i had my windshield wipers on you see, it was raining very lightly, so I had the windshield wipers on the lowest setting. But of course, as we, as anyone who's ever driven anything knows, if if they're on their lowest setting, the, and it's raining very slowly, it can take a while before the the windshield gets full enough that they actually start wiping the water off the windshield. So he basically failed me for that, saying. Look, you, you need to keep the windshield as clear as possible when you're driving so that you can see as clearly as possible. Like, even if... He, basically, he told me as a rule of thumb, the setting that I think is the is the, an okay setting for the windshield wipers to be on based on how hard it's raining, I should have it on the next highest, the next higher setting. He basically told me I, I allowed them to wait too long before wiping the rain off the windshield. I didn't really think anything of it because every single person I know when they drive, they always put the windshield wipers on the lowest setting if it's raining very low. And it does get pretty full before the windshield wipers actually start wiping the rain off the windshield, but no one ever thought anything of it. And my trainers didn't think think anything of the speed I was using either. They ne They never told me, hey, look, you, you need to have them on a higher setting than that. So, you know, I didn't think I was doing anything wrong. I didn't think it was an issue. I could see out the windshield pretty fine. So, you know, I didn't think it was a problem. But apparently it was.